Um, Stargate was an amazing movie. It spawned several amazing TV series. And that, that was some of the best sci-fi ever produced on television. Certainly the, one of the best of the star franchises. So let's bring in our amazing guests. First, we have one of only two actors who appear as the same character in the movie Stargate and the Stargate SG-1 series. You know him as Scara or Chlorel. Alexis Cruz, come on in. Hey, Alexis. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Thanks. Great, Great to be here. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having uh, me. Appreciate it. Next, this gentleman was a major, then a colonel, mainly because no one after a while wanted to be a superior officer. And he led the most unconventional SG team on Atlantis, John Shepard, or as we know him, Joe Flanagan. Hey, Joe, welcome. <laughs> Hello. All right, next, she was often the unsung hero of many an episode of SG-1, and she was the first character a, to adopt a child from another planet. Dr. Janet Frazier herself, Terrell Rothery. Hello, Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi, welcome. Hi. Thank you. All right, another medical miracle worker on the panel. He was one patching up teams when he wasn't going on missions of his own. Dr. Carson Beckett. Paul McGillian. Hey, Paul. Thank you very much. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, this next actor had the unenviable job of filling in for Daniel Jackson when he ascended, but he did manage to win us over SU1 member Jonas Quinn, Corin Nemec. Cor oh, hey, hey, what's, hey, what's happening? I'm actually, I'm actually catching up on my, uh, on my Flanagan right now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> uh, really, you know, things, you things have clearly that. gotten really bad for you, Corin. <laughs> uh, this next poor soul had to put up with Rodney McKay's bad attitude more than anyone else. He was Dr. Radek Zelenka himself. David Nickel, come on in. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's a miracle. <laughs> David, I thought you were doing this in a tank top. What's going on? Uh, Polly, Polly, what we talked about before the panel is what we talked about before the sorry, panel, right? <laughs> and finally, last but definitely not least, we have an actor that when he appeared in an episode oftentimes was beside himself. It's the guy who made Bo Bridges say, we've lost control of the balls. The guy balls himself, <laughs> Cliff Simon. Hey, guys. Let's oh, play ball. Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> you shot a lot of balls. Right. Talking <laughs> about handsome, right there. Uh, uh, I'm swooning. Well, I'm definitely swooning. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's start off with something. Um, we did have someone from uh, Dancing Blades '88 said nice beards to some of you fine folk. I think it's especially <laughs> met Corin. You know, I, I wouldn't there. call it nice, but it's uh, it's growing. <laughs> it's a beard. Some <laughs> so a fire hazard you all came in at different parts of the series so when you auditioned found out about the role what were your thoughts and what was that audition process like and i think we'll start with the person who had no idea going in that would probably be alexis because he was in the movie what were your thoughts about this whole stargate thing so at the time uh i hadn't worked in about a year and I was a teenager, late teenager. I hadn't worked in about a year, and I'd been working since I was a kid at nine. So for me at that time, I lost my mind. I was like, oh, my God, I'm never going to work again in my career, blah, blah, right, as kids do. Um, so my agent called me, and he goes, Alexis, I have a, 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 an audition for you, but I really think you should pass. I don't think this is you know, worth your time. It's an independent, low-budget science fiction movie, and you only have three lines, and they're not in English. So I was like, well, damn, I haven't worked in a while. Why am I turning anything down? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'll do it, you know? And I read the script and it was, it was so interesting. And, you know, just at the time, the whole concept was, wasn't in the mainstream. So I went in, I did the audition uh, and we just clicked with it. You know, I didn't know what was happening. And by the time I, I got, uh, I went out for a screen test and they flew me from here in New York out to California for that back in the days when that stuff would happen. Uh, and by the end of the audition, uh, Mr. Devlin was leading me around the studio saying, hey, I want to show you what we're doing here. And here's the art production. Here, and here's the toys. And here's all the stuff we're going to do. And slowly throughout that day, it dawned on me 
how massive this thing was and how important it was. And I was like, low budget indie? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and so I got the part. Dean, Dean told me I got the part. And then um, and I signed a contract for a three film deal. And that's what we were, it was supposed to be. So the encapsulated trilogy that would get larger and larger. Uh, and then they got on to uh, Independence Day and the rest is history as it, you know, when you guys took over with you guys. <laughs> well, you were back too. Terrell, what about you? Um, going into this, uh, I know you have a large body. Process? Yeah. Is that what you wanted to ask? Okay. Uh, originally, mm. I auditioned for the role of Sam Carter, which just makes me laugh because I can't even imagine. <laughs> I mean, it's just... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I auditioned for Sam Carter and, uh, from there, what happened? Oh, I think I was down, I was down in LA and I was auditioning for something. I obviously didn't get the part of Sam Carter. So I was auditioning for something down in LA. They were shooting back in Vancouver. I flew back home to shoot the movie here in Vancouver while I was here. My agent called to say, Hey, listen, uh, I got an offer here for you to, uh, it's a guest star to be a doctor on Stargate. I went, oh, great, terrific. And uh, he said, yeah, and it may recur. And I said, perfect. I mean, normally that's a kiss of death, right? It may recur and half the time it never pans out, right? So yay, me, seven seasons later, uh, she was on. So that's how that happened for me. Yeah. Awesome. Corin. Oh, I, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was at the uh, MGM uh, offices auditioning for something completely different. And the casting folks walked by while I was uh, uh, running my material for a totally different show. And I'd auditioned for them before for other parts in the past. And we just started having a casual conversation. And it was the very day when they started casting for Jonas or, or when the when the notice came out that they were looking for that character. And uh and we just started talking about it and, and I heard them whispering back and forth. And at some point they said, Oh, he looks kind of like Heath Ledger. And I was like, okay, well, here we go. But, uh, but it was perfect. And it, it got me the job. <laughs> so it, uh, yeah, yeah. It worked, it worked out well. How about you, Cliff? Um, actually what happened with me, it wasn't really, it was kind of a weird situation. Uh, I was asked to go into the casting directors just to read some lines. There was no character, um, Ball hadn't been created yet. Um, and I went in to MGM and I actually read a few lines of the Tilks, if I remember correctly. And uh, they, said, they said, okay, that's great. Look, there's no character yet, but uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, about three weeks later, I received a, my first script um, to fly up to Vancouver. And they said, all right, you're playing the character of Ball. He is being created. Uh, with you in mind. So kind of essentially, Val was created. They knew me. They knew my accent. They knew the kind of person I was. Uh, Mike Greenberg knew me very, very well. He obviously had a lot of input. Um, so, yeah, they, you know, I started started working and they never ever told me this is how the character should be played or shouldn't be played. I had no idea it would be end up being a recurring role. I didn't know from episode to episode whether I would be back or not. And uh, I was specifically told by Mr. Greenberg, do not ask for, do not get your agent to ask for a 10 episode deal because you will end up with a zero episode deal. <laughs> I did tell him because actually it happened once before and the poor, I don't know who the actor was, but it was somebody, uh, the agent asked him for that kind of deal and he never went back on the show or she, so I don't know. So they don't like being pushed like that. But anyway, that was my process. It was real. Kind of strange, uh, but pretty amazing and very humbling that the character was created with me in mind. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, Joe, you got a whole new show. Um, what was that like coming on and they're saying we're going to do a spinoff of Stargate? You know, what was the process for you getting that role? Well, that was very interesting because I, I honestly had no idea about the franchise. Um and the only thing in my head was, uh, this is going to offend all the sci-fi fans, but the only thing in my head was like Star Trek, right? I don't know. It's like people in tight suits and they have like really serious dialogue and they fly through space. And that's how ignorant I was. So when the material, when they said, oh, they might be interested in you for this, uh, my original thought was like, 
I don't think I'm good enough of an actor to pull that off. <laughs> and so they said, well, actually the show is, it's kind of interesting and it's very self-deprecating and um, you can kind of tweak it and do your thing. And I said, well, in that case, that's, that, that is a relief. And so I just went in with my take on it and it was a very weird, painless process. You know, sometimes everybody here knows some castings just drag on forever and you get put on hold. And this thing went wham, bam, went in, read for it. The deal was done. Like 48 hours later, the whole thing was done. So I actually didn't process it until I started when I caught up to Vancouver and I saw the sets and I, I was like, wow, this is, this is a massive deal. <laughs> and, um, and then I realized like, wow, I just jumped on some very cool ship and we're, we're going for a cool ride. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Paul. Yeah. What, what was your process and what did you know about Stargate before you walked in? Did you well, think it was Star Trek? It was crazy. I mean, I was a child actor in the opera. Initially it was like a, a three picture deal, but it didn't go from there. And then they want me to play ball. And then I said, you know, they wanted somebody a little heavier. They went with Cliff. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, I was down in LA um, and I just thought, you know, and I watched Star Trek as a kid for a long time. Right. And I just like Star Trek, Star Trek tight suits, Star Trek. And then all of a sudden they asked me to play Shepard and, they went to look at me and they got Joe. Um, yeah, they needed to go a little straighter. I, I heard. You're an ass, Polly. You're an ass. <laughs> and then, and then, um, I was. And they brought me back up to shoot something. I obviously didn't get a minute tapping part, and uh, but I do tap a lot. I do a lot of tap dancing. And then um, they decided that uh, can you do a Scottish accent, which is quite funny because when Joe came up here, and we did the table read, and we were all talking. I met Joe. And he's sitting just two people down from me. I think Rainbow was in between us, like looking at, you know, texting and something, <laughs> listening to music on his phone. And then I started talking. I had the first few lines of the, the pilot. Joe leans over. He goes, are you doing a Scottish accent? <laughs> Is that Scottish? <laughs> I'm like, that's funny. Because no one had any idea, right? It was so funny. I was like, what the hell was he doing? <laughs> so um, it was a lot of fun. And like Joe said, you know, once you got there and you saw the set, it was crazy. I mean, when it, we're like, this isn't going anywhere soon. This thing's here for a while. And that's when it kind of, you really felt true shooting the pilot and Robert Patrick there and whatnot. This is a big deal. So it was pretty cool. Awesome. And David, how about you? Uh, well, I mean, I'm sort of in the similar situation that Terrell was. I, uh, I'm a local actor and I didn't come along until after the pilot. My first episode was, uh, I think the third or the, or, or the fourth one. And I had, um, I didn't know anything about the Stargate franchise. I was most of the, the 90s when it was a big thing here, like the X-Files. And this is, again, from the sort of Vancouver perspective, the shows that sort of really opened the doors here. I was away in Europe, and I didn't get here until zero zero. And so when I was cast in, like, I think it was 03 that, um, that Stargate came along, and that's like, that I had no idea what, what it was. And I actually, uh, one of the first reads that I did was for a Scottish doctor. <laughs> with my Scottish accent, because mine was way more genuine than uh, than the thing, that what, what, whatever whatever Polly's doing. Now. <clears throat> Don't let him ever do a Scottish accent; it's horrible. Yeah, uh, but so no, the the it was just a generic generic Eastern European character. I had just been in Prague; that's where I was. Uh, so they wanted Karpov. They wanted Russian mathematician. Whatever. There, it's all Eastern Europe. So I told them, "Well, I am Czech. I speak the language," and I told Brad Wright my only Czech joke that I know, which I'm going to tell you right now, and that is the Czech guy comes <laughs> to me up. Uh, I am not letting you off. The little green uh, frame is around me, so. Uh, and Czech goes to the uh, uh, optician and he goes, uh, cover your eye and read the uh, read the lines there. And he covers his eye and he and he reads the uh, the bottom line. And he goes, X K Q V R R T M. And he goes, that's pretty good. You can read that. And he goes, read it. I know him. <laughs> oh. Like, wow! Now I know. Now I know how uh, Stephen Colbert feels. It's just bad. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Thus, the yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have a giant hook? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so I think I think that Brad Wright hearing my check joke sort of thought, well, we got we need this guy in the cast. So, so it was it was the third episode in. I was a recurring character. I did not know until the end of season five that I would not be recurring. Everyone was a single. Oh, you might die at the end of this one. That's how the producers kept me going. They're going, ah, we don't know, we don't know. So it was like I was one exploding tumor away from death all the time. <laughs> These things happen. These things happen. <laughs> All right. We do have a question came in from uh, Stacy Johnson. Um, and it's actually directed to Terrell Paul. She says, Her, your characters pushed me to go into the medical field. I'm married. I, what's that? I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's okay. Um, you guys are superb. However, she feels like you were cut short. Uh, how did you feel um, when you found out your character was going to be killed off? Um, and how do you think, what do you think of the way your characters died? And I'm, I'm going to throw in, what was it like to come back afterwards, after you died, even if it was from an alternate universe in Terrell's case? Um, Terrell, you want to start us off? Sure. Um felt pretty shitty who wants to die right <laughs> how do you really think i mean let me be on what'd you say polly you not swear please thank you shit, <laughs> shit, shit. um yeah so it wasn't it wasn't fun but in in my case i have to say honestly how they wrote her demise i thought was lovely that i still haven't seen the episode um or i guess it was two part of but i read the script and the script made me cry the fact that she went out you know with a literally a staff blast of glory and uh, they named the baby after her. So yeah, it was lovely. I mean, I think they really did a nice job on, on the scripts, on the story. And again, coming back, it was different coming back in uh, season nine from the alternate universe because it's different. Obviously it was a treat to work with Bo Bridges, but you know, not having Don Davis there and um, Rick wasn't there. There were all these different changes, but it was still, it was still great. It, you, you still felt like you're going back home, you know, even if it was for a brief time. So, yeah, it's been an amazing, an amazing journey. And everybody knows how grateful I am uh, to be a part of this genre. I just think it's fantastic. Sucks having to work with Paul, you know, oh, on conventions and all of that. But other <laughs> than that, it's, it's an absolute joy. Thanks for asking, Kyle. Awesome. And thanks for that awesome answer. Um, Paul, so... You died and came back and got to stick around a lot longer than Terrell did. So I don't know why you got that. but Because well, well, he was on social media media praying and asking all the girls to, you know, ask them to come back. The cheeky oh, ass. It really was, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> tight suits. That's been the quote. The quote is tight suits from Joe Flanagan. It's kind of creepy, Joe, that you thought that was like the thing you might watch Star Trek was a tight suit. I was a little bummed out we weren't all in tight suits. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm sure you were. I'm, I'm just glad Hewlett wasn't in a tight suit. <laughs> no one wants you to got that. to kiss him, so, you know. And he kissed me. Um, so my, my thing was, it, it was great, you know, uh, having been on the show was fantastic. But Terrell was not cut short, because I'll tell you, my first convention I ever did was with Terrell in uh, Germany. <laughs> and, okay, what's going on here? Sorry, guys, I'll give you back your time, but I just wanted to show, introduce you to my boy, Lucas. Oh, Hi, Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Lucas. <laughs> He's been banging on the door trying to get at Daddy. Nice. Aww. Oh, should beat them once in a while. It's good, right? Just give them a little food. They love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and water will Sorry, Paulie, back to you, my friend. <laughs> As Paulie's, uh, Paulie's father, he tips. Um, but listen, it was great. But Terrell and I did, uh, you know, Terrell is uh, lovely. And I did my very first convention with Terrell in Germany. I was so nervous because I don't think uh, Atlantis had even, and Don Davis actually was with us as well. And uh, Terrell's just give me a little pointer before she jumped onto the stage, like a bunny, an energizer bunny and just like took over the stage. It was amazing. But then later on uh, that night, she had a, a wonderful gift given to her by one of her fans and uh, we were having a, you know, a libation in, in uh, our room afterwards, and not our room, her room. I went and said hi. And uh, we are just having a post sort of uh, convention. And she said, I, this fan made me something. And I was like, what is it? And they made her, uh, this, this gentleman, lovely guy, had made Terrell a dress. And I said, you've got to try that on. 
So uh, Terrell went into the washroom, put the dress on, and came out, and <laughs> it was a valiant effort. Don't get me wrong, but it was meant for someone that's about six foot five, and Carol, <laughs> you know, maybe about five two, right, Carol? <laughs> um, and she came out and she was tripping over this dress and had two two holes in this thing, and she were, and we were dying. It was the best, and I'll, I'll never get that image out of my head. It was like Terrell inside of a potato sack. It was absolutely oh, the guy was so genuine, so genuine and so sweet. They gave her this dress. He was so kind, and he actually made a dress for her. And that that guy has now made uh, uh, somebody a lucky woman. You know, hopefully he doesn't go into the designing field. But it was it was hilarious, and Terrell was so gracious with it. But I got to see that, folks. It was something. Flanagan, you're killing me over there. <laughs> I just was anybody else listening to Paul? So I was just like, what, you know. Yeah. Flanagan, Flanagan's bringing out the big, the big guns now. The big dogs. <laughs> I love it. He, he rents those for like zooms and stuff like that. He doesn't have any pets. That was my oh. son. Yeah. So we have a question from Lauren Nichols, and she wanted to know: Do you remember your first Comic Con experience? And you know, what did it mean to hear from your fans how much you and your character meant to them and were loved? So, Cliff, why don't we start with you? Um, she means Comic Con, the real Comic Con, instead. Yeah. Well, any any I would say comic, comic convention, media convention. It could be a creation con, whatever cons you've been to. My first convention I went to was an absolute nightmare in Nuremberg, Germany. I was with uh, Peter, um, and he made me. Well, what we ended up doing was, and I actually saw a post the other day. Somebody. There was some memory from something, and somebody said, the only thing I remember from the Nuremberg Convention was doing body shots of Cliff Simon. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. I thought people had <laughs> So, yeah, Peter De Luis, uh made up this huge big deal about uh, we're going to raise so much money for charity, but Cliff's volunteered to, do body, to let you do body shots off his body. And of course, we raised a lot of money. <laughs> but it was an insane, yeah, it was an insane thing. And I mean, as all of you guys know, our German fans are very passionate. They're probably our favorite fans in the world. Oh, I'm not going to say that, but they're the most passionate fans. And some of our biggest viewership is in Germany. So, but that was phenomenal as a as an introduction to the whole Stargate world. And just like Joe, when I came into this, I had no idea about, I mean, yeah, I've watched, yes, Star Trek, and I liked certain sci-fi movies, but I had no idea there was even a thing called a convention where people get together to go and meet actors, or so it was pretty eye-opening for me. I'd done, you know, back home in South Africa on the show, I did a lot of appearances and that, but it was nothing compared to the, the passion and the love that all the fans out there had for the show. So mind-boggling. Every single convention I've been to, has been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Awesome. I can't wait to see you in person so I can do a body shot off you. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's creepy. The, the, ads, the ads are a little Just soft. a little. I'll work on it. Um, Alexis, have you been to a lot of cons, and what has that been like for you? Yes, sir. Uh, by now, I've been to a lot of cons. Uh, my first one, though, uh, I didn't know, like, Cliff, I didn't know that this these events existed prior to and I got a call from uh, Jay Bone, who had turned me on to these things. And one of them that was going on who had asked about me. So I called him. And so the first one was, I think it was a Chevron, maybe. Uh, but it was my first time out in England, out in the UK. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, all right, that sounds great. And I went out there for the first time and had a, an amazing time. So we super tourist did it up, um, you know, paid some bills off that con, which was great. And had a fantastic time and like just the response to everything after by this point it had maybe been four to six years after the movie mm. that you know so something like that so the base was already there to just shout at me and overwhelm me you know and it was it was shocking and beloved and, and you know I, the rest is history then i was everywhere <laughs> awesome corin um, well, my, I'll make mine short and sweet. Uh, it was, I think it was outside of Orlando, but, uh, 
I had gotten roped into it was it was more of a Star Trek convention and they hadn't even aired any of my season of Stargate yet, but they were introducing the character. And so I got booked to go to it. No one knew who the heck I was in reference to anything sci fi at that point. Had no idea why I was there. But uh, the creme de la creme was was being wrestled to the ground by a six foot three Klingon in the hallway because I was wearing a faux wrestling shirt that said blue collar wrestling on it and he decided that uh i shouldn't wear the shirt if if i couldn't wrestle <laughs> okay <laughs> that's up there with body shots uh joe <laughs> the first convention i ever went to was uh comic-con and it was really interesting because literally we i think we aired on a thursday night first episode the pilot episode and then they said, we're flying everybody down to Comic-Con and it's going to be Saturday, I think. And I thought, well, that's just so incredibly presumptuous. Like, what, what, what are we going to do? Like, nobody's going to even know what the hell the show is. It seems like a waste of time to me. I don't know. So we flew down there and they take us through the labyrinth of things. And then all of a sudden they start introducing people and I hear this noise. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I walk out of the stage and it's gotta be 5,000 people packed, like standing room only. And I thought to myself, wow, this is insane. Because this is about the 14th pilot I've done but I just did one that had a built-in fan base <laughs> and literally like SG one had teed this thing up and we were just fortunate to just step right in. And it was incredible. Yeah. And was I was awesome. terrified. <laughs> That's awesome. And terrifying. David, your first experience. And then you. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, my experience is very similar to what everyone is saying. Alexis, Joe is, is I was so shocked at the amount of people. Mine happened at the he uh, Heathrow Thistle uh, Hotel coming out on stage and the flash bulbs and Joe suddenly, was, and I thought, I was wait so a shocked second. at the I amount mean, of people. Mine have been working at the Bridge Studios, you know, I, uh, I do scenes and I go home and I wash the dishes. There's no, there's, there's, there's no response to it. And suddenly to have to be sort of, to see this influence but i think more because you guys have all expounded on this thing but it's all of you i'm seeing you all here joe terrell paul corin cliff alexis i've seen you guys all over the world and for me that's a, a remarkable part of this thing it's the fans that we meet i mean that is that is surprising but the places that we've been i remember talking to joe in toulouse i remember with alexis and uh i think it was also in toulouse wasn't it or, and paul indianapolis all the different places terrell and and watching your guys how you do in it how you handle <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But watching how you guys do it, like uh, how Paul, how you said how Terrell plays the room and uh, and how, how you guys sort of, I've, it's been a huge experience because I was an actor and a theater actor and, and doing scenes was what I was, I've never, you know, being on stage and being a celebrity or being there for just being you without a role that you're playing. So the combination of the travel and the companionship is what it's morphed into for me for, as being just a phenomenal thing. Plus, of course, the community, right? Absolutely. Terrell, was it the dress thing or was there another Comic-Con menu memory you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was actually wanting to agree with everything David was saying. It really is magical. And, and you talk about the community. As I'm sitting here chatting, I'm getting texts from people that are my friends, people who mm -hmm. I met at, you know, years and years and years ago at conventions and a friend right now in Chicago saying, Oh my gosh, look at you. You're here so long. So I'm sort of going back and forth, but yeah, so you do, you, you, it, it is, um, it really is a gift for actors to have that, um, that thing where we can both communicate with each other and be in person to say, thank you so much, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be still doing what we're doing in 20 years later for SG one. Here we are still, still doing it. So it's, it's fantastic. My first convention experience was in London as well. Um, and it wasn't just a, a, a Stargate convention. It was sort of a mix. So when I went there, it was uh, Billy D. Williams was there. Bruce Box Leitner. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm losing it now. However many people, how, how, how many of us there was but anyway it was my first and I too was absolutely terrified because 
I really, I kept thinking, what are they going to ask? And like you mentioned, David, we didn't have a script to hide behind, a character behind, to hide behind. It was just us. So I, I was, I just remember thinking, I don't know, they know more about this stuff than I do. And um, Bruce sort of took me under his wing and walked me through a bunch of different things. But basically, the thing that I will always remember about that first convention, as I'm sort of walking around, you know, thinking, what have I got? My, what is this? I am. Um, Oh, hang on a sec. Oh, yeah. hang on, That's I'm me. Back. I'm calling you. Hang on a sec. Yes, Polly. What What do you want to say to me? Shut up, Terrell, please. Shut up, Terrell, okay. please. No, no, shut up. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Terrell, Terrell, that's enough. That's just, it's just... <laughs> Is, the bottom line is, I all of a sudden am attending a real life wedding. The bride and the groom were dressed up like Babylon Five. Bruce is the best man. I am, and we're both. But it was like I was like walking in this like haze, thinking, "Is this for real? Am I actually?" And I was like, "What?" It, like here I was signing, and the, that couple many many years later showed up at a convention somewhere in the world and brought me their child and said, "Thank you again for." We're doing what you did. So it's things like that. Like, where do you, how, where else would you get something like that? You know, don't call me again, Paul. I'm on the. I'm <laughs> <laughs> did they gave you Thank a child? You. They gave you a child? What? They gave me a child. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> how many proposals As a have you seen? I mean, on- Joe and I get scotch and stuff like that, but you got a child? <laughs> I got a child. You got the scotch. I got chocolates too. I know. That's good. I also love chocolate. Yeah. David wants to know how many proposals you've seen on stage. Wedding proposals. Oh, exactly, right? How many have we seen? There's a lot of those. Lot. That's great. <laughs> a lot. So, so Paul, what was your first uh, con experience? Well, like I said, it was with Terrell, actually. And we, we did a kind of a tour. We were in Germany, and then we went to Scotland, and then we went to London. And I remember um, going to Scotland after the Germany uh, exposure to it, you know, and I got, had a, then I really got a vibe of how amazing the fan base was. Um, and then I thought, Oh my God, in Scotland, I don't normally speak with a Scottish accent. We're in Glasgow and I walked with Terrell as well. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I thought, what am I going to do here? Cause I know I'm not going to always talk with a Scottish accent. Cause I don't have one generally speaking. <laughs> and so I went, I bought a Scotland scarf and I put it under my, my uh, jacket and I came out and, you know, they, they introduced me last. It was like Don Davis, myself, Terrell, I think Doug, our, our earthers and a few other guests. And, uh, just a great crew. And I went out and I, as soon as I started talking and there's this all, there are a lot of people it's in Glasgow and they all had their kilts on and they're waiting. They're like, back it, back it with their pints and stuff. And I came out and I didn't have a Scottish accent at first. I said, you know, I'm so happy to be here. I was born in Paisley just down the road. And everyone's like, well, that's fantastic. And then I started talking more and I could hear them looking at each other. What? And one guy goes, Hey mate, where the hell is your accent, mate? I said, <laughs> I pull out the scarf, the Scotland scarf, put it on my head. I said, right bloody here, mate. End of story. <laughs> and they went crazy, right? It was so fun. And I'll never forget uh, that. It was, it was, it was a really gla- a, a, a great uh, representation of the family, you know, for my family and be able to be in Scotland and do a convention. It was a lot of fun. And Tommy Cox, uh, Ronnie Cox was there as well. That was a great guy. That is totally awesome. Um, Jeannie Four wants to know if you could guess her in any other sci-fi series, what would it be? Now, Paul, I understand you actually were in a Star Trek movie. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. The the J.J. Abrams one, the first one, yeah. Very cool. I had read for the role of Scotty and, uh, you know, obviously didn't get that part. And uh, they offered me something else. And I had a chance to work with J.J. and do a little cameo in the movie. It was was a blast with Chris Pine. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. Sweet. David, any other uh, sci-fi series that you'd want to be in? <laughs> uh, I think you're. Pa- I think you're, 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 muted, you're David. muted, David. You got to unmute. There yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, muted. That's you're muted. That's the, it's the zoom of our brilliant technician. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the blue button. <laughs> Oh, the blue button. Yeah, we were only playing it on TV. Um, uh, sci-fi, I mean, comic books are the thing now. I just did a little bit of stuff on Arrow. Um, it's it's bread and butter, but I'd love to do um, other stuff. I just did a spy series in Europe for HBO, and spy stuff is really fun. I really enjoy doing that. And, uh, I mean, The Last Great Frontier is, is Cowboys. Cowboys are next, so let's get horses and grow our beards back and 
and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, was that, did I answer the question? I, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of. It sounds no. like you want to go more superhero, which is which is I'm, fine. I'm going to chime in really. I'm going to chime in really fast. I just, I, I just want to work. I just want work. It's freaking COVID out there. I just want to work. <laughs> I got you. Which is Joe? why he's not working, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rick and Morty. Yeah, exactly. I just want to be on. I, I just want to be on Rick and Morty. Dave, they can smell a starving actor a mile away, okay? Just slow down. Yeah. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that could work for you, Joe. You know, I don't know if you know this, Joe. You were like the fan favorite character when Peter David's New Frontier books came out to play um, Captain Mackenzie Calhoun because he had a similar attitude to your character. I don't know if you I'm ever told jerk. that. But, but they never actually came out with a live-action version of those books. But uh, you were the favored <laughs> one that they wanted to see in that role. If it would have been made, so I, I don't. I'm not aware of that series, but yeah, that's okay. It's okay, Joe, you'd be great in it. You you would be, yeah. Corin, any uh, other sci-fi stuff you? Oh look, I just want to do Spaceballs the series. Yes, <laughs> that would that would work for me. Yes, yeah. you'd be good. Jack Black as Barf. You'd be great. <laughs> How about you, Terrell? I really can't think of any, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, to Terrell. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Kate. Bye. <laughs> well, well, I just saw you uh, the other day on Supernatural. I was Terrell watching, works I'm on like, everything. oh, there's Terrell. Was that, was that when I got turned into a chipmunk? No, no. It, it was when you were just pulling out the body. You were just the medical examiner. Oh, that oh you've yeah. got to see the one where I turned oh, that, into Oh, that narrows it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to that one. Alexis, any any other uh, sci-fi series you would like to be in? Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who would? Oh, Mandalorian. Why not? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> or or whatever or whatever new thing is coming. They've got what uh, slated a hundred different new series. You know, there's going to be a ton of stuff there. I think I'd rather do something like one of those new original things, but definitely in Star Wars. I mean, that's just you know. Well, Alexis, I'm not going to embarrass you, but like last week, I saw you in a show. Yeah, why I, start now? You were amazing, <laughs> you were amazing in a, the show I saw you. I texted you about that. Oh, yeah. Thank and, you. And F, was it FBI? FBI is called? Yeah, it was called FBI on CBS. Yeah, and he that, was in the, in the pilot. On he was fantastic. Really wonderful performance. Thank you, Bob. Mean it. Yeah, awesome. It and Cliff, what would you like to be in? Uh, you know, I win Battlestar. Galactica was still on up and running i really wanted to get onto that show and i never had the opportunity before they shut too good looking buddy too good looking yeah uh, <laughs> i keep saying that dude it's like nobody's gonna want to blow me um, <laughs> battle star was a good show i really enjoyed that show but i'm all with david for cowboys because i'm kind of a closet cowboy and i my entire career have wanted to do westerns i haven't had the chance to do any yet, and I'm dying to do a Western. I just think it's time to bring them back, grow the beards, let's get rough, let's get out there. None of the smooth shit anymore. You know too I mean? good looking. <laughs> too good looking for that, too. But, 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 but hey, Cliff, but your show that you're on all the time, you're in there like horse. the creatures and stuff that you're all after. That is so crazy that you do that, Cliff. Uh, I didn't hear you. Are you talking about the show, the, show, the show that you do where you're going to the rivers and stuff and you're doing all that kind of crazy stuff? It's amazing. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks so much. Love it. Uh, whoever's, uh, everybody watching this, please, you've got to write to yeah. the channel and tell them why the hell haven't we picked up, been picked up for season two? Bastards. <laughs> uh, by the way, it's, it's so annoying with the Westerns because, you know, I watch Westerns and I grew up on a ranch. And then I'm what? like, why didn't I read for that? And then these, I watch these actors like on a horse and they're like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, I don't know. How to ride. I, mean, come on. I go, I have branded cattle. I have castrated cattle. I have broken horses. Why aren't I on that show? No. <laughs> yeah, but we don't want to watch cattle castration every oh, single you know, night. I was going to say, he had me up until that one. Yeah. You know what, Joe? I'm uncomfortable right now. Okay, that's creepy. All right. And you grew up in Malibu. What are you talking about? I didn't grow up in Malibu. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus. I can barely afford to be here. <laughs> you got a bandana around your neck. I can put you in a series right now. That's right. 
<laughs> well, we are um, running a little shy on time. Unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be able to get to any everyone's questions. Even though Kelly Heeg wanted to, uh, Joe to use a surrogate to bring back Neil on General Hospital. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, there was a question about being nervous going back to conventions and being in crowds. Um, are there concerns about that? I mean, anyone can just answer if you're concerned about going back to cons after the whole COVID thing. Yeah, I would, gonna... I would certainly be concerned. Uh, I mean, attitude wise, I would love to go back to, to a con, but it's just, and you know, I think it's just way too dangerous out there. Um, too many people, too much in close space. I think doing this right now is really the best we're going to get right now without risk. Um, and even if it's a 2% risk, you know, one or two percent of that is what's going to end up at my house with my little boy and, and God knows who else. And then I can't work even if I get an audition. It's just too much right now. I certainly understand we want to be social and we need to get out. And for a lot of people, that is a huge part of their life and their healing. But how much of a risk? I mean, it's just too big. The logistics are. The phrase, the phrase that we keep hearing over and over is now is not the time, right? So, uh Later and depends on the time and depends on the jurisdiction. And uh, hopefully I'm looking forward to it starting up again. Anything, everything. Yeah. I, I don't understand this because I just drank a thing of bleach as per, you know, the advice of Donald Trump. I think we're going to be fine. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if we'll be seeing you at too many conventions after that. but. Uh... <laughs> Hey, listen, we all miss, I think we all, for everybody that's on the panel, and got a chance to, the people we didn't work with, and the chance, to, like, you know, Cliff or that we're never on the same show, but I've, I've spent many conventions with Cliff, and we've become very good friends, and, and Alexis and everybody. It's a great chance for everyone to bond and get together, and we love meeting all the fans all over the world. We've been very fortunate. It's a gift that keeps on giving, and I think we all miss that, and we're waiting to get vaccinated, and, and hopefully everyone can be safe in the next year or so. I mean, it's a really difficult time, but we just we, we love all you guys, and we're we're so happy to be able to even do this with you guys. So I will say, I I, I want to say one other thing. You know, I just talked last week about this because they've changed the dates of all the conventions. They keep pushing them back and so forth. But um, one thing that they don't seem to want to change at this point is the FedCon in Germany in May. Yeah, um, which seems pretty soon, yeah. but um, they think that they're going to be okay in May. So who knows? Yeah, Maybe I'm scheduled to do that too, right? We're, we're both scheduled to do that, I think. Yeah. Oh, and then I'm not going. Uh, I'm not going either. Are you going? No, no, not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's go around real quick. And if you have any um, final words, anything that you're working on that you'd like to promote, um, or even just a cause that you want to give a shout out to, uh, let's start with Corin. Anything you want to say in final to the fans and anything you want to talk about? Like um, the reason for the beard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, I'm developing a, a series right now with Jason London uh, where we're shooting the presentation for it uh, in, in a couple of weeks uh, called Blackwater Blues. It's a murder mystery, uh, kind of a dark comedy down here in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Hence why I'm at Three Alarm Comics, which is uh, one of our locations we'll be filming at while we're down here. So I thank uh, uh, Three Alarm Comics for uh, for sponsoring my uh, my day today down here. And, uh, and beyond that, that, you know, you'll you'll hopefully be seeing uh, Blackwater Blues as a series uh, shortly uh, after we finish the presentation. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> and David wishes you lots of luck. David, what are you working on? <laughs> Uh, I pushed okay. the right button. Yeah, um, uh, it's cool. I've just finally got a gig, uh, so there's something coming up. It's a real life person, so that's kind of cool. So I'm uh, able to research on something. Tune into Carnival Row. I did a little appearance on that. And if you have HBO Max, there's the HBO series called The Sleepers, not to be confused with the Amazon series Sleepers. The HBO Max one is the Czech one about spies and the revolution in 1989. That was uh, lots of fun. It's been fantastic. To see you guys, Alexis, Cliff, Paul, Corin, Joe, Terrell, all of you guys. I miss you a lot. And I miss you, my fans, all of our fans. Without you, we are nothing. And looking forward to seeing you in person sometime. Take care, guys. Thanks, David. Terrell, final, final shout out words. Oh, I just want to say thank you. Huge kudos and to you guys for putting this together. Thank you so much, Kyle. And uh, yeah, it's so nice to have this opportunity because it really is missed um, being able to see everyone in person. So 
Thank you so much for that. And I would say, Holly just told me to shut up again. He just texted me and said, shut up, Holly. <laughs> oh, Carol, that's offside. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Cliff, what's going on? Um, so, yeah, you know, just to what you guys have said, all you guys, it's so nice to see you. Like Paulie said, we see each other at conventions all over the world. And uh, it, it's the really the only time we get to see each other. A lot of people ask me, do you guys all hang out together? And unfortunately not. We're all sort of split up all around the world. Uh, so take your, your shirt off, buddy. What's that? <laughs> take your shirt off. <laughs> um, hey, look at the tats. That, that was real from my show. From my show. Um, listen, they missed me. Uh, so I'm on a virtual that, meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you you're next door? You want to come uh, come over? And just, uh, <laughs> thank, uh, yeah, I'm just about next door to you. Yeah. Uh, thanks to all the fans again, and you know it's such an amazing thing because we have all these new generations of fans, little fans that have been taught by their parents what Stargate is. So it's just this ongoing thing. So I can't wait to get back to conventions, meet all the meet all the fans. Yes, it's way too soon to go out there. I don't know what they're thinking, but uh, you guys should be careful, Joe and Paulie. Uh, think about it very carefully. You've had families. I don't have a family and I wouldn't go. Um, lately, I'm working on, we have in production, not in production, in pre-development, uh, Land of the Free, which we are trying to expose the Safari Club International illegal trophy hunting in South Africa, <clears throat> which is going to be a huge deal. And we have a trilogy film series called El Mythia, which is in development. Um, and it's a ph phenomenal sci-fi fantasy film. It's a co-American, uh, American-Australian production. So hopefully we'll get that going. But COVID has delayed a lot of things. Um, and hopefully we can all just get back to work. And it's really awesome to see you guys. And thank you once again to all the fans for so many years of amazing support for all of us. Thank you. Good. Amazing. Awesome. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that. Yes. Alexis, final. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I think everybody else sort of got the substance of, of pretty much everything. Um, but thank you to Wizard World as well. Thanks for all the fans for being here, of course. And it's always good to see our castmates, our families, wherever we are. You know, it's great. It's one of the dynamics that I love. You have this group of people that you get really, really close with, and then you don't see them for a year. And then we show up again. And here we are, and it's like that connection comes back instantly. Uh, you know, it's like hopping through this pocket universe. It's beautiful. So thank you for the opportunity for putting all this together. I really appreciate it. Glad you could be here. Joe? Uh, okay, I guess it's a two-part, what we're doing and, and a message, whatever. Um, I, I started a character on uh, the show C with Apple TV. Some dude named Jason Momoa. Um, uh, and then the pandemic hit and I only got done with like three episodes. So apparently I'm, we'll be going back to do more and then who knows when they release that we'll see. And, you know, I felt kind of guilty that I might upstage this big hunky dude. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm trying to lay it low. I'm bringing it really close. Right. Wearing um, your flats, wearing your flats instead of heels. But he just heard right? <laughs> the story, Brian. Right. And it, you know, it's tough to dial it down, but <laughs> I'm doing it. Uh, but I, what I do want to say is that, you know, this is such a strange time. And it's hard to describe the disparity between those that are able to um, continue to get some income and those that can't. And what I'm seeing is so disturbing. Uh, shit, what just happened? Uh, shit. I think Am you're I getting still a phone here? call. You're, you're still, still here. Hot. Sorry. Sorry about that. Please, I'm just uh, calling you to tell you to shut up. Oh, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, Girl told me to. What I'm seeing is I, I just, people in food bank lines, and, and I see the mentality uh, people who do okay, and they just don't get how difficult the situation is for so many people. And I just feel like we just need to make an effort to realize how many people out there are really not just hurting, freaking out, you know, freaking out. And so I just, I hope that we can all understand it 
and have some more empathy. That's all. Very true. Empathy is so important. Paul, would you like to wrap this up? And- sure, sure. I mean, you know what Joe said, you know, empathy is the key here. I think um, we've had uh, an amazing experience to be on these shows and have this platform that, you know, Wizard World has given us. And uh, to be able to reach out and see the fans even this way, we miss all you guys. And uh, we love that we have a chance to see you a little bit here and hopefully next week and and whatnot. But uh, the thing is, uh, I think everyone misses ha- meeting their friends and having human contact and meeting. Fans. I will say some people watch football, some people watch basketball, some people watch sci-fi and these conventions all over the world have been a, a great way for us to travel and meet all you wonderful people and just know that we miss you guys too. So um, it's difficult times, but it's going to get better. And, you know, and uh, if everyone's smart and takes care of themselves, like Cliff said, you know, and uh, we're all smart about what we do. I, I think we'll be able to do it, you know, sooner than later. You know, I, I really appreciate being here and having that. And uh, just one little thing. Um, uh, Joe mentioned uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, Sarah Chalk, who's uh, one of the voices on that show, um, she's on a series called Firefly Lane that comes out next Wednesday that uh i i do there's 10 episodes i'm in seven or eight of the episodes i play her dad and it they age us through time and with uh katherine heigl and herself it drops on netflix next uh february 3rd fantastic five probably awesome. need a good chance to check that out check it out it's fun it's got great soundtrack and chayla horsdall uh, who's an amazing actress plays my wife in it and it's got a great fantastic cast um get a chance to check that out in the meantime we look forward to seeing you guys and and giving you a uh a big squeeze when we see you in our, in our lines, you know, and it'd be amazing. I know I, I speak for all of these guys, so they're all amazing people. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Paul. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Don't forget, fans, in addition to this live free panel, um, these amazing actors will be participating in one-on-one private video chats, custom recorded messages, and autographs. So go to wizardworldvirtual.com for more information about that. Um, and, of course, continue to... Follow us at Wizard World on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and join us for some upcoming events later today at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern. We have the amazing Dolph Lundgren, who will break you. And um, tomorrow is the amazing stars from animation Joe panel. Joe, Joe in a tight suit could take Dolph down. I'm telling you right now. I would love to love to see <laughs> oh, yeah, that match. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow is stars from animation. February 6th, we have Lark Voorhees and Morgan Fairchild. We'll be doing virtual panels. Uh, Bruce Campbell will have a groovy game show on February 11th. Uh, February 13th, we have Hatchet and Candyman panels and Keeping the Horror Going on February 14th. We have the Legally Blonde panel Um, and we have a a Clerks panel on February 20th. And on February 28th, we'll have cast members from The Walking Dead. Uh, One more virtual round of applause for Alexis Cruz, Joe Flanagan, Terrell Rothery, Paul McGillian, Corin Nemec, David Nickel, and of course, Cliff Simon, the man with a lot of balls. Virtual emojis. <laughs> is a lot of balls, something like that. Thank you so much for uh, being here, guys. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom. <laughs>